Hello, my sweet shabby loving friends. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you're new, my name is Becky and welcome to Kinda Shabby. Each week I share kinda shabby but always chic crafty inspirations. Now I have some fun Pinterest inspired crafts that I am so excited to share with you. So we're just gonna go ahead and jump right in. The first one, we are going to be taking some of my mother's beautiful hand crocheted doilies, some netting that I purchased from Hobby Lobby, and we are going to be using that to install them onto the frame of this old window. So I think that that is just going to be gorgeous. The first thing that I want to do though is to get some polycrylic all over this base so I won't have any more chipping paint. So let me go ahead and adjust the camera, grab my poly, and we will get this project started. This video is in collaboration with Crafty Leany for Leany's Shabby Tuesdays. Please follow the links below to visit her channel, and I promise you will love her beautiful shabby creations. This thing has just lots of good old chippy goodness, and I can't recreate that. So I'm just going to be putting some poly on there. I'll be using the Minwax water-based polycrylic in clear matte. You don't want to shake up your poly because that is going to add bubbles. Just give it a little bit of a stir. This is a brand new can, so I'm going to be pouring a little bit of that out into a plastic cup. So I'm just going to put some on my brush, start applying. And I'm applying even over that rusted hardware because I want to get it all over to make sure that nothing is going to chip off. So I'm gonna set this aside to dry and we'll move on to our next project which involves some old sheet music. So now we're gonna have some fun with some old sheet music and the new Iron Orchid Designs stamp set collection. This is called Fruitful Harvest. And if you do not have a retail stockist where you can order yours, Kimberly at My Victorian Heart is where I buy mine from. And she is just fabulous to work with. You get two stamp sheets. This one has little pumpkins, leaves, and acorns. This one has some wheat, apples, and vine. How beautiful is that? So we're just going to be using these stamps and some various different colors of ink, and we're going to be stamping these onto a few of these pages here. Now, because I haven't used my stamps yet, I am going to need to condition them. So what you're going to do is remove your top sheet to reveal your stamp. Now you want to take a fine grit sandpaper and you just want to scuff up the surface of each of your stamps. You don't want to push hard, you just want to go first one way and then the other because it helps your ink to adhere better in that stamp. Your little stamp sets also come with what are called masks. And what these are are little cutouts of each one of your stamps. And that is going to help when you want to layer these. And we're gonna get into that in a little bit as well. We've always got scrap wood in the garage. So I just went out there and dug around until I found a piece that I liked that I thought would fit some of these pieces of paper here. Oop, it's already falling apart. I'm going to grab this big pumpkin here. Now the first time you take these off the backer, it's going to take a little bit of effort. So now I'm going to play around with how I want my design to look. Our little vine would look cute. So I played around with it for a little bit and I think I like the way that placement looks with the vine up there and the little pumpkins down here. Because I want him to be in the foreground, I am going to stamp him first and I'm going to be using the Ranger Archival Ink in the color Monarch Orange. I'm going to load up this portion with the orange and then do just the top of the pumpkin stem in the color Coffee. 
and center him up right in here. And then once you've placed your stamp, just want to walk your fingers all over it. And then we're going to lift straight up. Oh goodness! Look how cute! I like it! So I'm going to be taking this and laying it across where I just stamped a little tiny pumpkin. So I'm going to be layering it just like that. I don't want that mask to move on me. So I'm going to be taking just a little bit of painter's tape and taping that down. Now that I like the placement of this and the large pumpkin, I'm going to take this clear sheet and lay it down just like that. Now when I pick it up and turn it over, my inking surface is right there. I'm going to be stamping this portion in the fern green. I'm using coffee for the stem and monarch orange for the pumpkin. I love these stamps. They are just so beautiful and so detailed and they make anything that you do look so professional. Then I'm going to hover, lay it down, Use one hand to hold everything steady and then use the other hand to walk over your stamp. And then once you have all of that in place, you're going to lift straight up. Look how cute! Now when I remove the mask here, very carefully so I don't tear my paper, oh, and I tore my paper. <laughs> now you can see how that pumpkin is in the foreground because using the masks it allows you to layer your designs. I could not be happier with how that turned out. Now I'm going to add just a few little details. So I like this little guy right here and I'm going to come in and fill in some of those areas. Place that down right there. Let's add in a little piece of our wheat. Look at that. All our little wheat coming from behind the little pumpkin there, our little leaves. Oh goodness! Guys, I really, really like that. And how quick and easy and cute and fun was that? Our poly is dry and it looks great. I'm going to open this up. I'm just going to spread it across the back where I have plenty of room and I'm just going to staple it all to the outside of the frame. Let me do this corner to this corner. So turn it this way. So I'm just going to lay this back down and go back and just fill in areas that need more staples. We'll get started in the morning on stitching all of our little doilies onto our netting. So I think this is going to turn out great. So I love how the screen turned out here using the netting and I'm excited to get my mama's doilies attached to that. And before we do that, we are going to do another stamping. This time we're going to be using the apples. That's going to be really, really cute. And then for our final project of this video, we're going to be making a shabby chic wreath to go on this gorgeous, rusty, crusty old door. So we've got a lot more fun left in this video. I'm going to be using the vine again and I've got it placed right here and the little apples in here. Then I made sure that I can turn this around and put the vines up here again. So there we have with that vine. I put my apples on there. I'm going to use the green on the leaves and the color red geranium on our apples. I'm going to rub this down to make sure I don't have any ink on that to get over there. Place it down and get to stamping. Hover over and see where that's going to look good. This looks a little bare right over here, so I'm just going to ink up the leaves of the apples and just stick them down right here. And that looks good. I like that. Well, let me get this cleaned up and we will get some of my mama's doilies applied to that window. So these are the doilies that I selected. This one has such beautiful detailing on that. And then this one here. 
then this big one and it's got a stain on it not sure what that is but I can cover that up and overlap one of the other ones and then I also found this in her sewing box one that she had started and oh that one just gets me in the heart so I played around with the placement and I think this one over here kind of centered this one in the bottom here this one up at the top and then her little one that she started just over here in the corner. I'm going to be using some heavy duty nylon thread and a nice big long needle. And I think what's gonna be easiest for me to do is kind of cantilever this out a little bit and just start in this corner. I've never done this before, so I just hope that it's gonna turn out, but I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. I think this is just adorable. So I've knotted my thread, but that knot is gonna come through because this netting is just so big. I'm gonna tie it off so it doesn't come through. Well, this is as close as I'm gonna be able to get the camera, but what I'm gonna be doing is taking and stitching down all the little high points of the doily, so then when I stand it up, it's not going to fall. And this is going to be a little time consuming, but I think it's just gonna be so worth it. And I'm not pulling tightly. I just want to make sure that it's tacked into the netting. So that's all I'm going to be doing here. I'll check back in with you guys in a little bit. In the meantime, I'm just going to be stitching and tacking down all these little high points on each one of these little doilies. Well, I'm going to give my eyes a break and we'll move on to our wreath, but I could not be happier with how this is turning out. And I think this is a wonderful way to display those keepsakes that you have from people that you love that have made things for you over the years. I stitched across here and right in here. So I did an up and down stitch, went behind, stitched over here, came back up, stitched here. That way it was going to keep all of that all straight. I also went back and did stitching all around here as well so it would prevent the possibility of any sagging. I can't wait to get the others stitched on there so let's go ahead and get started on our shabby wreath. My Pinterest inspiration came from Lucy at Craftberry Bush. She just had such gorgeous soft muted colors in her wreath and I just wanted to do something very very similar to recreate that soft look for fall. I'm not digging this color here that's a little too brown for me so I'm just going to mute that a little bit by covering it with burlap ribbon here. We're going to move on into making these cute little flowers and I'm also using a stamp to make some pretty little leaves that are gonna go on there. Get our leaves and our flowers and some greenery. That is just going to be gorgeous. For my flowers, I am using Osnaburg muslin. And the difference between just your regular muslin, you can see that's just a nice, beautiful cotton. But the Osnaburg has all of these beautiful little flecks of color in there it just adds some more visual interest but you can use whatever fabric you have on hand that's going to be pleasing to your eye for the color scheme that you want for the petal pattern I really don't even have a pattern I just cut out almost looks like a hot air balloon in two different sizes that way it's going to give me the inside petal here and then the outside petal I took my muslin here I'm gonna fold it over a couple of times like that and I'm just gonna cut just like that then where my fabric was folded I just go in there and cut the fold apart and then it's the same thing when I do the smaller pattern and it definitely doesn't have to be perfect so I'm going to cut a few more of these and then we'll start getting our flowers together I've got all these little petals cut out, so that's fun. Now to make the middle of the flower, I took a one inch wide by six inch long piece of that muslin. You just take it and fold it in half, increase it there just a little bit, run a line of glue on the edge, fold it over, 
and I always use my Bondo spreader. I'm sure you guys missed it last week. It didn't make an appearance in last week's video, but here it is. Bondo spreader. I'm going to do the same with this one right here as well. Now to make the middle itself, you're going to take an edge and you're going to fold it down and roll it over on itself. So you've got the middle looking like that. And then I just twist it and roll it because I want some of that frayed edge. And then twist it and roll it. Now I'm going to put a little bit of glue so it doesn't come apart. And you can see we've already got how cute that is so far. Twist it and roll it. And now I'm going to put a little more glue on that edge there. Hold it till it sets. And there we go. Look how cute that little center of our rose is. So we're going to start with our smaller of the two petals. And we're going to fold this in half, put a little bit of glue about a quarter inch away from the bottom. We just want a little dot of glue right in there and then we're going to squeeze that together. So then the bottom is open and we've got our petal looks like that. And then that bottom portion we're going to be gluing onto our stamen. Now I'm going to open that up a little bit where that bottom is flat. That is where I'm going to be gluing it. You can see I've spread it out. And I'm going to lay that down and glue that on the bottom. I'm going to take my Bondo spreader and hold that down. Now let's put another one on. That's what we have so far. I'm going to lift that up, a little glue, hold it down with my Bondo spreader. That's so cute already. I'm just going to squeeze that middle together now. So now let's add some of the bigger ones. And we're going to do the same thing. Fold it in half, add a little bit of glue about a quarter inch away, tap that together. And now we're just going to start putting those between the others in the same fashion. And we'll put this one right here, just basically layering them around. And again, I'm just going to squeeze it all together. Love these. Now to make our little leaves here, I'm going to be using several different of these little individual leaf stamps that came from my Fruitful Harvest collection. And I'm going to be stamping that into some drop cloth. And they just turn out really, really cute. Then I'll be gluing, we're going to glue some floral wire to the back of that to give it some stability and also so we'll be able to wire it onto our wreath form. Now for this I will be using Ranger Archival ink in the color coffee. Now to stamp on your fabric you want to make sure that you get a lot of ink on there. Really, really make sure that you've got a lot of ink because your fabric is going to soak that ink up and you want to make sure that you've got plenty for that image to come out nice and crisp. Place them on my fabric and just start walking my fingers over that image. When I'm stamping fabric, I press down more firmly than I would when I do paper because I want to make sure that the imprint really comes out nice and clear. And I'm going to lift straight up. And that turned out so pretty. These would be great on some placemats or some napkins for your Thanksgiving table. Goodness gracious, wouldn't that be pretty? I'm going to do another impression because I'm not actually sure how many leaves I'm going to need for my wreath. And make sure that ink gets all down into those fibers. So nice. Now we're going to cut around our leaves. And to get around all of these details here, it's actually easier if you use a pair of scissors that have small blades. So I'm going to take a few minutes and cut all of my leaves out almost on that edge of the ink but not quite because I don't want to cut the ink away. I want that to all stand out. So for our leaves we are going to cut our florist wire into nine inch sections. 
Now to make our little leaves, all we need to do is glue that onto the back side of the leaf. It's truly just as simple as laying out your leaves, running some glue right down the middle. And because these are a little crooked, you may not get it all into the glue everywhere, but as long as the major portion of it is in the glue, you'll be fine. So before we add in our leaves and flowers and our greenery, we're going to add some more texture and interest to our wreath. So what I've done is taken burlap ribbon and I cut it into six inch lengths and pinched it in the middle and glued it just to form a little bow. And I had just enough on my roll to make 12 of these. I'm just going to glue them just as you would if it were a clock. So I'm going to go ahead and glue on all 12 of my ribbons here. And then we're going to go back in and I have some scraps left over from some shabby tassels that I made. So I'm just going to go ahead and use them as well, again, to add some texture and interest to our wreath. Now I'm going to be taking some of my scraps here and these are also six inches long. I'm going to just be kind of giving them a little twist here. So almost forming a little bow just by twisting it. And I'm just going to glue them in between the little burlap bows here. And I'm just going to keep doing that all the way around between our sections here. Again, that's going to add some nice little shabbiness and some texture and some color to our wreath. So now we have all of the strips glued on in there. And I will say if I had had longer strips, I would have knotted it like this and glued the knot on. That would have been so much easier than what I have here. So now that we've got the base of all of our little fluffy fabric and ribbon in here, now it's time for us to begin adding our last step with our greenery, our handmade roses, and our leaves. So I have two different types of greenery that I'm going to be using. These are just cute little picks that I got from Walmart. And then this is part of a garland that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. On each of these little pegs here, there's two of these little things here. So I think this gives you a lot of bang for your buck. And I just literally start pulling something up, doesn't matter where, tucking it up underneath there. So I'm going to cover that up and I'm just going to start gluing these in. And you just randomly place them where you think it looks good to you. So we have all this little greenery on here that looks so cute. And next I'll be gluing in my flowers. So I'm going to load up the back of this and place that down and hold it until it sets. Now for the leaves, I haven't put those down in place just yet, but I've taken one and placed it between each of my flowers. But I've left this space up here blank because I am going to be putting a ribbon up there to hang it and I'm not quite sure how I want this to look. So all I'm going to do with these little leaves, I'm going to hold it in place, take the floral wire and just bend that down and around and up underneath and I'm tucking it into the wreath form itself. So I've got a leaf there. Again, I'll just hold on to that, grab my floral wire, bring that down. I've got the end here and I'm just bringing it in and sticking it through that burlap ribbon and into the wreath form itself. And I'm just going to continue that with the others. I'm loving that, these soft, beautiful colors. So I have just a piece of the muslin that I snipped and ripped make a loop and pull that through. So we have that. Now I can figure out how I want those last leaves to look. And there we go. I'm going to come back in and add just a few of these little picks to add just a little bit more color and then we'll be finished. 
So I'm basically going to take two little pieces here and I will be adding them like this on either side of those flowers toward the center of the wreath like this. So you've got this on the outside and then this to the inside and that balances out that greenery. So I'll just be using more of these little sprigs and I'll do that to the remaining four flowers here. So we have all of our greenery between our little flowers there toward the center. These are on the outside, that gives balance. Now the last thing I'm gonna do right up here at the hanger, I'm going to take this little grouping of berries, put that right there, and then I'm just going to stage it up and let you see how beautiful everything turned out. that I made a handcrafted item to display my mother's handcrafted items. And maybe one day this will hang in my daughter's home as well. you show me week after week just thrills my heart and I appreciate you so much. Please visit Lenny's Shabby Tuesdays and show her some love. Then come back next week for more kind of shabby but always chic crafty inspirations. And until then my friends, be blessed.